Tries to dance his way through, not having it was Kane LaFranchise, but it came to Shaler anyway. Shaler roughed up, puck came to the right point, and a blast from there is gobbled up by Erickson. It was a long range out for Ellis, and Rochester able to clear the zone. Turn right back around at Sanguinetti. Into the circle, snaps on score! Zone with a stretch pass, Sestito. He's in right side, danced his way through Sestito to the backhand, and he couldn't finish, couldn't get his stick. There by Padon, forced it up the boards, came to Adam all the way across. There's a shot in front by Verona, blocked by a sprawled out Biega. Drop it from the franchise, opens up, plays to Biega, one timer, glove save by Makarov. A rising. Utica coughs it up right in front, Dolpy with a shot that blocked down, and then Ellis scores. Matt Ellis ties the game. With 17-22 remaining here. Kennett to Jeffrey. Then for Jensen to the front. Score! Kane LaFranchise taps him. Down to the goal line, O'Reilly waits with it, frees it to the slot. Sanguinetti with a blast, scores! Second of the game for Bobby Sanguinetti. And the Cubs take a 3-1 lead on the... Travis, what, what was the difference tonight? What were the difference makers in this game? Well, I thought we stuck with our game. Uh, you know, I thought both teams were... It wasn't a very emotional first period. I thought it was... Uh, you know, it was just a so-so period for both teams. Uh, but we stuck with our game. And uh, I like the way we responded right away. After uh, they scored their goal, we, we responded right away with a real big shift and got a goal. I, uh, that Sanguinetti shot, the first goal, that, what a snipe that was. Just hitting it in one corner. Totally I haven't oh, seen yeah. the replay yet. Was it low or high? Low? No, it was, it was about mid. Yeah, was it? Yeah, it was a real nice shot. Uh, you know, he's been playing well. Bobby's been playing real well, and uh, not just offensively, but he's, I like what he's doing in his own end as well. It's hard to, you know, you can't overlook what the franchise did tonight, too. I mean, not just with the goal, but defensively, he was yeah. very strong. He was. He's, he's been good for a little while now since he got called up last time. Uh, you know, he's, he's showing us the player that we had seen last year play and, and the guy that we had envisioned, and uh, he's doing a good job, you know. There's opportunity when guys get hurt, and sometimes guys step up and they, they don't play well, and some guys take that opportunity and run with it, and he's playing well. Of course, locally, everybody's keeping an eye on Sestito. What was your, uh, your analysis of how he played tonight? I thought Tommy played well tonight. Uh, you know, he's a big body, tried to get in on the four check a couple times, uh, had some hits. You know, he had a few good scoring chances, too. He showed that he's got some nice hands. I thought it was a good, real good first game for him. Um, I, was, I couldn't come up with Sanguinetti's name, I'm sorry. Uh, Bobby Sanguinetti? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> what, what makes him different as a defenseman uh, or, or having that potential to be a scorer? Well, he's, just, he's got good hockey sense. He's got uh, good offensive instincts. Uh, you know, I think one thing about being a, a defenseman that scores is being able to get your shot through. You know, some guys have a knack for getting pucks through to the net, and, and some guys have a knack for, unfortunately, getting them blocked. And, uh, you know, it's easier said than done when you're standing at the point and you got a maze of players, and there's always at least one guy trying to block it to find a hole to get to the net. So he's got a bit of a knack uh, for getting pucks to the net, and it's not always a slap shot. He's got a, he's got a real good wrist shot that gets through there with some velocity. Well, when you got Bobby in there, and, and all of a sudden now the franchise is starting to up his game with Frankie Corrado back. You got five defensemen that will jump into a rush. That's got to be a great offensive weapon. It is. I think in today's, you know, today's game, a lot of people are preaching getting your D up in the rush, joining the play. It's pretty hard to just have a three-man attack with your forwards. Uh, you want your D up, and you and you got to have defense that are able to get up and skate and join the rush. So uh, we're fortunate that we have some guys that can do that. 
Jim, uh, just your general impression of, uh, of the comments right now and what they look like uh, to you tonight. Well, I was I was very impressed uh, with them. They, um, you know, they have a good combination of hardworking two-way players and and skill. So, you know, that's a good combination. And so far, it's it shows up in the standings. They they work hard. They compete every night, and you know they have the skill to make you know plays to make a difference in the game. They're a real good puck handling team. I mean, they break out fast. Yeah, I was like their defense, you know, they can all handle the puck, they get back there, they make good plays, they get it up to the forwards and away they go. So uh, this is my first game that I've seen the team play this year and and I was very impressed. What a year, uh, what a difference a year makes a year ago where, to where both of these clubs are. Now Vancouver's got one of the best teams in the NHL and the, and the Comets are one of the best teams in the AHL. Is it just timing has worked itself out or something else that you guys are doing philosophically up there? Well, you know, one of the things that we talked about that we wanted to do is we wanted to add depth in our organization. And I think, you know, that's what we did is to try to bring in players. So, um, you know, we surround our young kids, our draft choices with players that are good AHL players that you can win with so it teaches our young players the right way to play and how they need to play to win and then the other part of that is you know we've had injuries up top and you know we call guys up and you know they get the opportunity to come and 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 play for us in Vancouver and they give us depth and they help us win up there um, we, I think there's like 26 or 27 skaters on the roster uh, uh, right here now um, is that is that difficult to deal with that many guys, or, or you know, how does that work? Uh, well, you know, for whatever reason, there's a lot of injuries that happen in this league. When you play three games and three nights, it's you know it gets tough. So, um, so we have you know we have some extra bodies around here now because we have injuries. But when all our guys get healthy, you know we'll. We'll figure it out, figure it out, and go from there. How, how many how many players are under contract to uh, Vancouver altogether? Forty-eight. We have Forty-eight guys under contract. And, and uh, a few of them are down in the ECHL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got some guys that are down in the East Coast League. It's got to be encouraging because a lot of those guys, when they're getting called up from the E to Utica, with the franchise, just come out and they're really stepping up and picking up their game. There's no holes there. Yeah, I thought I thought he played excellent tonight. You know, like he's, you know, he's he's good depth for us to have in our organization. And you know, when we have injuries, and and in this league, it seems like you know, defensemen, uh, you get a lot of injuries on defense. So it's good to have guys that can come in and and uh, play good for you, so you don't miss a beat. You have uh, the, the young guns were all down here for a little bit uh, during the course of the season before Horvath got called back up. Um, what are some of your impressions of guys like Jim Carrick and Gaunt uh, as you got a chance to see them on the ice here tonight? Well, I think they've made strides from the start of the year. Um, the American League is a tough league to play in. You know, I think they need to keep working on their games, uh, keep you know adding strength and. You know, the, getting used to the speed of the of the league and stuff. So, you know, they they look like they're improving, and so that's that's good. You had a teammate uh, who's from this area here, Kent Foss, you know, in Toronto. Do you have any memories of playing alongside him? This was in the mid '80s. That was like 35 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember what I did a month ago, so no, I, right. I'm sorry, the name's not familiar. All right. Ted, Ted? Ted Foss. It was in the oh, 80, defenseman. 85, 86. Oh, geez, that's, sorry, that's so long ago, I can't remember that. All right, I'll make up something good anyway. <laughs> <laughs> how, did, how did you think Tommy's team was like? I thought Tommy was good. He, uh, so he hasn't played in like six weeks, so he's, you know, he's come down here and working hard to get back in shape, but I thought he made a couple nice plays. He hit the post there, uh, so I thought he, play, he played a solid game. He made a nice little move before he even got to the post. That yeah. Was, uh, 
for a guy who's supposed to be doing something different with his hands. Yeah, no, that was an excellent move he made to get around the defenseman, and you know he uh, did the old toe drag yeah. and uh, got around him and uh, made a good shot, but hit the post. Yeah. What a move! What, where the hell did you come up with that one? Oh, you know, it's uh, they're in the bag. I just, uh, you know, you don't get to bring them out as much up in the NHL. But, uh, you know, I'm down here to play. And, uh, you know, if I got the time to do it, uh, you know, I'll bring it up. This this was the first time you've been back in a game situation for uh, a little while since the injury. Uh, a, how did it feel out there? And, and the leg's still good? Yeah, you know, the first period, I, I was looking around. I thought they were playing 40-minute periods. It was, <laughs> you know, it was going a long time. But, uh, you know, I settled right in. And... You know, my legs and lungs, uh, they felt good going throughout the game. Uh, how did it feel? You, you were playing with two smaller guys there. They, they, you know, they're, they're smaller even for an average guy. So uh, how about lining up with those guys? What was it like? Yeah, you know, they played uh, great. You know, I know exactly what they're going to do with the puck. You know, they they're, uh, they can make plays, but, uh, you know, they're the grinder type, if, if you will. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's great that I know the puck's going to go north. And, you know, they made a lot of great plays for me tonight. Based on your experience playing at the NHL level, uh, speed-wise, how does this match up? Yeah, you know, it's it's right there. I just think uh, the only difference is maybe, uh, you know, the uh, where everyone is. Everyone knows exactly where they got to be, and you know, sometimes you get lost out there down here. But you know, me and myself included, it's just, uh, but it's a great league, and you can't take it lightly when you come down. Uh, how does it feel playing in front of a lot of your family and friends? Yeah, you know, it was great. Uh, you know, I started laughing there at the end of the game when I saw, you know, JoJo up on the uh, on the jumbotron. Uh, I was laughing like, you know, that guy. I was like, yeah, yeah I, I know him. But uh, you know, it was great to see all my family and friends here, and uh, you know, I'll cherish that one for a while. That was a little scary experience, the guy on the jumbotron. Yeah, no, he's a, he's a great guy. You know, he probably had a couple couple in him. It's uh, yeah, it's uh, that's that's great.